Ohio football has been in 10 bowls. The 11th bowl, dare we say, the best destination that the Bobcats have ever had. Welcome back to the Atlantis Resort, Nassau in the Bahamas. He's Rob Cornelius. I'm Russ Eisenstein. Quentin's behind the camera, and wow, what a fun trip to this point, Rob. Yeah, by far the best bowl stop we've had in our time with history of Ohio football. The resort is fantastic. Players are having a great time. Yeah, the Cats looking for their third program bowl victory, first since 2012. And let's get into it from an Ohio perspective in our final report for you. Um, I think the break helped. I think the reset helped. I think the surroundings helped. Uh, because the last two weeks of the season weren't great after the win over Toledo. This team needs to get back to how good they were, how fun they were in those weeks leading up to that rocket win. Yep, and it's a refocus. Make sure the seniors, these fourth and fifth year guys, can get this team focused back. The senior defense, so many of that front seven, the one deep and the two deep are these older guys. Will they take this on in a serious game? I think they're sure. You know, the interesting thing about the last two weeks there, I mean, they weren't blowouts. They were competitive games. Ohio just lost. The Cats had a chance at the end of the Buffalo game, and the Akron game was tight. The Zips made plays, and then Akron went on to the back championship game and lost, and then lost to Florida Atlantic in the bowl game last night. Um, this is an offense that has that sizzle. If you take a look at bowl games and what makes them interesting, Ohio's offense light it up on a bowl marquee because there's a whole lot of buzz to it. Yeah, and there's a lot of points and there's a lot of running the ball. This has been a 40 point a game offense for most of the season and Nathan's work, work is taking some really, really big steps. He makes this thing marketable and interesting for TV. It'll be interesting to see what Ohio's offense does against this Blazer defense. They're pretty good against the pass. Ohio, bread and butter has been the option and that's setting up the pass. It'll be interesting to see the mix that Ohio has against a, a pretty salty Blazer D. Yep, got to hit some throws, got to hit some big throws over the top at some point because teams have been challenging. You saw Nathan work spend extra time after practice first day down here throwing the ball around because he wants to take on these eight-man fronts for over them and put some uh, put some gains on that tape. And we'll see who's out there because Ohio had some injuries. A.J. Olette probably back. Dorian Brown probably back. Brendan Cope in his final game as a Bobcat at wide receiver, most likely back for the game. We saw Cameron Odom make some plays at the end of the year. Tight ends, two seniors going out as well. Uh, the hope is that you can diversify to get everybody involved on a special day. Well, when this thing is working, Ohio runs and passes both very, very well. And this UAB team is frankly a lot like Ohio, two teams that want to run the ball 60 or more percent of the time. Dialing up pressure, too. That will be key from UAB's standpoint against a, a very good offensive line for Ohio. Jake Prees anchoring it in the center there and him playing in his final game. Protection on UAB's side. This is a defense that has really, really flummoxed quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers all year. Quentin Polding playing in his final game. Yeah, he's going to be a busy guy. Always big with tackles. How much you see him blitz. How many chances you see Jimmy Burrow take on this defense. Call in blitzes some late in the season. Things worked out pretty well most of the way until those last couple games. And it was a secondary that was tested. They were aces in that test. They aced that exam against Toledo, not so much against Akron and Buffalo. Got to recapture that playmaking ability. Some hard hitting and some good plays Ohio's made in that secondary. Brad Ellis and, and Javon Hagan and others. Yep, got to take some chances. And again, getting that pick six, getting some sort of big turnover, that's the key in this game. This is a UAB team that is minus on fumbles and absolutely minus on sacks. He's up to you Heat and humidity and all that sort of stuff, that will play a part in this game too. Ohio sideline will be the sun side of the field. And in the first three bowl games here, the team that's had that sun side has lost. Yep, you played on the surface of the sun, you've lost. That's not the best place to be. So are these guys hydrated like us? Are they prepped? We'll know soon. Speaking of the sun and fun, you bet. It's time to get that going. Time to work on this tan. Our work is done from a TV perspective, Rob. We'll talk to the folks on Friday. Yep, outfit change. Let's go. Time to spray on the SPF 15, strut on that beach, have some fun with the rest of the cats. We hope that you've enjoyed our TV coverage here. We hope to speak to you on camera after a victory on Friday. Our radio network coverage begins at 11.30 a.m. with the kick at 12.30 as Ohio takes on UAB in the Bahamas Bowl. For Rob Cornelius, shirt on. I'm Russ Eisenstein. Shirt off. Quinton's behind camera here. Thanks for joining us. This is Bobcat TV.